Hello Aviators! Probably noticed that the name of this channel is DC is Unscripted and that's what we're doing today. So instead of uh, third and hopefully final part of my uh, BKB Stacks review, I want to talk about Touch Portal and its integration with with DCS. Now what is Touch Portal? It's a combination of uh, Android application which is mirrored here and uh, desktop application they communicate and from the Android device you actually uh, control ECS with the help of this application how does it work? Touch Portal it is typically for streamers and you can have uh, controls for I don't know Photoshop or whatever and it's not only about simulating key presses it can do many things and there's a plugin for it called DCS Coins I will link it in the description and that one talks to DCS uh, via DCS BIOS, which is kind of extension script for BIOS that helps build in uh, these physical, but not only physical, uh, panels. What I'm showing you here is a panel for Albatross, this, uh, for L39 Albatross. It's uh, now cold. When I change something, I'm clicking here in this panel, but it's the same like when I'm touching the my Android device. That's easier to do it on screen, of course, here. Uh, so this is not a simulator, this is actually a mirror of my Android device. And it works both ways, so whenever I flip switch here, it also changes here. You can see that um, this master warning is now not visible because uh, it should be on the gun side, which is not mounted in this and this um, instance of plane but uh, because it sends the signal I can see it here on, in the panel no, no problem and what I'm showing you here is one of the pages I developed for this uh, L39 this is actually an alternative page we will switch back to the main page and very shortly talk about uh, its design and uh, what it can do what the touch portal can do for you now I decided to create this page as a a page is meant like a panel uh, as a combination for Alpha 9 c and ZA. Some parts reflect uh, uh, C variant more, for instance this one copies this one here. But there are also these ZA elements uh, with this green stroke around it. Uh, then we have section and this part of the cockpit. This is a central pedestal and in ZA part of this a gun panel or weapons panel. Uh, this part here, there are some controls here. Uh, this is this one. Biter tube. You can see that it actually also shines or not, depending on the battery. Uh, now the button went up because it's uh, when there's no electricity, it pops up. Uh, in L39. So you can see that you also can get some feedback on the panel. That's cool. For instance, this flight recorder switch here. The background also reflects this light here. This this dark green shows you that it's on, but sometimes it blinks a little bit. How cool is that? Now how does it work? So each of this element is called button or slider. We will talk about sliders as well. And let's talk about the application here. In the button, you can program what it does on press, and you can also program what it does on various events. And there can be an internal state uh, in the touch portal application, and that's uh, what these values are for. I actually back up uh, each button with a value. You don't have to do that technically. You can directly uh, you know the, the button knows its state but using values has a couple of um, cool consequences firstly even if i don't work with this is by uh, this is i can still flip the switch visually i can see that it's flipped because uh, the visuals are based on the visuals are based on the changes of value and whenever I press it I not only send the instruction to the cockpit 
this is the action for DCS uh, coins, then DCS BIOS and DCS eventually. But I also change the value that backs up this uh, button. And visuals are changed based on this value. I also change the value based on the events from the cockpit. So that's how you know I will learn that oh something changed in the cockpit. Why is this cool? And why is the value cool? Because I can have the same button on two pages and you know the state is consistently shared. It's it's like the same button. You know? If it was just this button status, which is possible in Touch Portal, Touch Portal has something like built-in status of the button, it wouldn't work because button on this page could be different in different state than the other one on the other state, uh, other page. So that's not what we want. So that's why I back up this uh, these switches with values in most cases because it makes the panel more responsive even if you're not using DCS. And then it also allows one another trick, which, which I talk about later, and allows you to uh, use the same value on multiple pages. So that's cool. I showed you what buttons are here. You can see that there are various switches. Some of them are three-way, for instance. I don't know, one of these is three-way. And in that case, uh, you have to go around, you have to cycle through them. But you can choose the right direction direction. I choose the glide path first, then landing because it makes sense for me when I land. But there is no support for gestures. That's a limitation. So if you have multi-state uh, button, you have to do it this way. You have to cycle through the states. For some buttons, of course, it's a it's a problem because some of these states can be like disruptive for your operations. Uh, but in most cases it's okay. Now, of course, you can create multiple buttons for exactly the right value you want. It's not a problem. What else do we have here? For instance, this weapon carrier, that's a cool one, but you have to switch to the other plane, to the other plane, to the ZA variant. To uh, enable the outboard station, you press this one, and to disable it, you press this button. Here, it's the same button, it's just toggling, but it's clearly showing whether it's, you know, on and off. And what it does when you uh, change the status from on to off, it actually clicks this button for a while. You can see it. So many things you can do. Uh, you can play with the, uh, with these buttons uh, a lot. For instance, here's another kind of macro. You open the cover and flip the switch and then you close it. But it also reflects the statuses in between from cockpit. Now, that requires uh, quite some, let's say, programming, <laughs> All right? Plenty of, uh, plenty of events here. But uh, I simply decided to do it, kind of like a technological demo. What else can we do here? We have these sliders. Sliders are uh, one way only. It's a limitation. See, it's, uh, it's this one. Not obvious because DLS is, is making blur from the button, but it's done in that one. Uh, so if you turn it here, it's uh, not reflected back to the panel. Uh, so you can control it, no problem. You just don't see the actual status if you change it in the cockpit. Limitation. But not a problem, really. What else can we do? I have some momentary buttons here. Uh, so normally in cockpit you need to hold it, but there is no way how to hold something touch portal application doesn't support. Press and hold. There is only press. So instead, of course, I toggle it. But it's also more practical for some cases. So, plenty of controls. And also it's very flexible. You know, you can have it different for each plane. Of course, it's not touchy-feely, but it's flexible. I talked about those values. How cool is it that uh, you can have the value behind the button, and it's uh, you know the values um, tracked in the in the desktop application, of course. Why is it cool? Because normally, when you change something in the cockpit, it is reflected, but 
It doesn't mean that when you enter the cockpit, all the things are reset to the right position. That's a problem because uh, uh, we don't have all the events when we enter the cockpit. They are not all sent here, you know. So status of some buttons can be stale, but it's not such a big deal if you think about it. Let's say I'm um, uh, in the middle of the flight, you know, it's uh, some free flight mission. I started, buttons are all off. What I can do, and uh, buttons are off, but the switches are on. What I can do, I have this help button here, which simply changes the status, uh, the, the value of those values, you know, <laughs> the actual value of those values that beg the buttons. And it only switches the visuals here, doesn't send anything to to the to the DCS as you can see and it, that makes it quite safe because if you change it now back at least for two states uh, buttons it's obvious you know it doesn't change anything it only changes if you go from the actual value in the cockpit and the same way for instance this one it's uh, now uh, disconnected sort of but if you change it no problem the, cock the this panel now learned that it is up as it thought already so next click will simply pull it down so it's pretty safe of course again you have to think about with what buttons you can do this uh, whether something seriously you know stops the engine for instance so think about it but again because these are values you don't send anything to the DCS unless you really click on it uh, so that's why I use these values behind the buttons. And the other reason, of course, as I said before, is that they are shared between the pages. <clears throat> and with that, I would uh, wrap it up for today. Uh, I didn't talk about how to install it and other things. If you're interested, I will uh, some other time. Because it's uh, not totally trouble-free. Sometimes it requires some messing around with DCS BIOS, which is actually delivered DCS coins. Sometimes it's completely without any problems, sometimes it's not. Uh, so I can talk about uh, that more in depth. But what I wanted to show you is this touch portal page, or this uh, you know, DCS coins page for L39, which I will also uh, publish on user files. The link is again in the description. And with that, DC is unscripted, over and out, fly safe, and so on and so on. See you later!